Hey, this is Leach with Simpson Math, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the t-test for matched pairs. My primary audience is for my online stat students, um, but you know, obviously, other people can uh, be able to pick up from this because I'm focusing on some weird issues that kind of appear up in our Larson Eighth Edition. Um, but let's go ahead and get started with an overall about what is a matched pair test. So. It's going to be a test that's going to look like it's going to look like we're going to have two samples but in reality those two samples are actually paired together so what might this look like this maybe it's like a a weight loss regimen um and so you might um, take their weight before um, put them put someone through a weight loss regimen and then take the weight after and see if there was a significant difference and then we might compare a before mass after another before mass after could be like a change in cholesterol um, that's an, uh, that's another time when we when we would want to go down. Maybe it's a bodybuilding regimen and we want it to go up. So we compare the before minus after and we want it to increase. We want your weight to increase because you're getting stronger. Um, maybe it's something we can maybe do at the same time. So like it's a um, we wash you know for like six weeks you use um, one face wash on half your face and then one face wash on another. Things that is repeatable like that uh, we can do it do it on the same person or the same subject. Sometimes there are some things that maybe aren't repeatable. So we try to find people who are as identical as possible and we compare them together. So another kind of situation with cholesterol is I could pair two people together who have very similar starting cholesterol, maybe similar ages, gender, attributes like that. Um, and then we again compare the difference. And then it's just instead of a before mass after, we're going to compare um, or it might be kind of before mass after nested in there, but we're then going to be comparing person A to person B. Um, so what is what does our data analysis look like well we're going to have typically um two different variables they might look like samples but it's really one sample and something is going to be pairing and linking those uh these two numbers together um we'll see an example in a second um i often especially if we're doing a before mass after we should be it should be done in a kind of a after mass before um that might not always be the case um specifically in an academic setting you're often told which way to subtract so it might not make sense we'll see an example of that but it should be um a after mass before because in this case let's say this was a um maybe working on trying to improve improve some numbers like maybe this was a test score um we took a uh, you took a pre-test learned some stuff and then took a post test we obviously would want that number to go up um so if i look right here somebody uh took a pre-test um and they made a 30 and then their post test was a 35 so they got five points better uh, on this uh, on this test and so in order to see that five points better i'm just going to do some subtraction we're going to use d to represent d for difference um so here i have 35 minus 30 to get me five and then this next row of this person they started with 47 um something happened and they actually got worse by seven points um so notice that math for that would be 40 minus 47 especially if this is a before mass after we tend to want to subtract it in the other way this individual they stayed the same 28 before 28 after so we do that all the way down um, and we do that subtraction so notice sometimes um here these two individuals started at 29 but this one um did even better got four points better than the other one so it's helpful for being able to kind of make those comparisons um, where it's specific to just that one individual. That's why we're doing these differences um, and not just kind of the ending test score. So um, at the end of the day, we now have um, this column of Ds, this list of Ds. So I could kind of summarize this list of Ds as this negative 7, 0, 5, 5, 6, 9. As we know, multiples are fine. We want to include them all. And at this point, I just have a list. It's just a re regular list like we've been doing all semester long. I could find a sample mean, a sample standard deviation. I'm going to find the number of individuals in the sample. Well, you'll see in this section, um, and so sometimes we'll might specifically, instead of calling it X bar, we'll refer to it as D bar, just saying it's the mean of the differences uh, in our sample. Instead of just an S, it'll be S sub D, and then um, we'll just, you know, N will be N. So then the general practice and procedure for this is that we're going to run a T test or a T interval procedure for just one sample. So like on the Rossman chance applet that I'll model in a second, it'll just be a one mean scenario. If we're using the TI, it'll be a T test or T interval. So let's take a look at an example. Um, this is from Larson 8th edition. And this says, the passing play percentages of 10 randomly selected NCAA Division I college football teams for home and away games in the 2020-2021 season are shown at the table. At alpha equals 
one, sorry, at, at alpha equals 10% or 0.1, is there enough evidence to support the claim that passing play percentage is different for home and away games? So that's important because that's kind of leading us into our claim. Is there enough evidence to, uh, to support the claim that there is a difference in home and away? Assume the samples are random and dependent uh, and the populations are normally distributed on complete parts A through F. So these are paired together. By this saying this is dependent here, um, the reason why they're, why they're mentioning that is that um, there is a relationship between these two, two things. College one, so let's say UT, uh, uh, University of Texas, um, their home at passing play percentage is 51%. Uh, but their away is 55.8. Well, this is the same team playing home and away, so there is is some sort of relationship. We would expect better team pe uh, teams who pass better to pass better at home and away. People who pass poor to pass poor at home and away. So it's relative to each other. That's why it's dependent. Those other caveat populations are normally distributed. Our sample size is small. Um, our sample size is less than 30. And Typically, if our sample size is less than 30, we need to have to make a picture uh, to be able to see that it's plausible that our population was normally distributed, but we were just told to assume that the population of these differences is normally distributed uh, because this question isn't wanting us to have to worry about that. So how do we deal with this situation? Well, I'm going to eventually need to find my differences, but first let's actually just go through these questions because it says it's identify the claim as we saw a second ago. Um, the claim was that we want to see if there's a uh, is a play percentage passing play percentage different for home and away. Um, well, um, the claim is that there that it ha little, sorry rambling. Let's look at my options. So I can see that the pa passing play percentages there's lots of p's passing play percentages has changed, decreased, not changed, increased. I was looking for the word difference. That's where I got flustered just a second ago. I was, I was wanting to see that it's different because I don't see that as one of my options. Um, so I have to look at look at what it actually says. And I see here that it says that it has changed. So that it has changed. We're not caring whether it's better at home or better away. Uh, we just want to see is there a difference so that it has changed. Um, all right, so that's that. Um, this says let mu sub d be the hypothesized mean for the differences in passing play percentages passing play percentages and here this is important we got to look for this on this type of question just because we have a computer grading this um, and they're wanting a specific direction that we're going to be doing our, our subtraction um, if this was kind of real life then you would kind of subtract in an order that kind of makes sense but here they're wanting us to do home minus away so since this is a difference um, it's not too big of a deal um, yet because i can be able to answer this um, with our hypotheses, but I'll see something in a second where we need to do our differences first. Think about think about the order of the differences for our uh, alternative. So if we take a look at this, we want to see if it's changed. So that's our claim to see has it changed. So that means that we don't care if it's increased or decreased, just that it's not the same. And so our claim here um, is this uh, alternative right here is that mu sub d uh, is uh, not equal to zero, that it is that it has changed, it's no longer just the same. Um, versus the alternative, I'm sorry, that is our alternative. I do want to point out then that the null hypothesis under the, this system the way Larson does on the hypotheses, we have our complement would be our null. Um, so if the alternative is not equal to, then the uh, null would then, would then be equal to. So this is going to be a two-tailed test, um, which is going to be helpful for us in a second. So. I'm going to need to now find uh, d bar uh, and s sub d. Well, in order to do that, I need to know what d is. So I'm just going to kind of zoom in on here. I'm going to make a new line. And I know you can't write on the problem itself. So what I would be doing is I'll just, I would just be doing this on scratch paper. So just say I'm going to find my differences. And this is going to be home minus away. So on scratch paper, I would just start doing some subtractions. Um, I'm grabbing a calculator because I don't want to mess up on camera. Um, so I have 51.0 minus 55.8. And I get a negative 4.8. And I'm just going to keep that process up. So this one, just to be clear, I'm doing 49.1 minus 51.5 because it's home minus away. So let me type that in. Uh, 49.1 minus 51.5. And it's negative 2.4. 
52.4 minus 49.6 is 2.8. 47.3 minus 44.2 is 3.1. Obviously, you probably skip ahead because I'm not going to edit this. Just skip ahead if you need to or do keep doing this with me. So this difference are pretty close. There is just 0.1. Uh, 44 minus 35.9 is 8.1. In a second, I'm going to show you how you could use Excel to try to make this be a little bit faster if you're techie. But honestly, the data set is not that large when you're doing this. Um, so it's pretty easy to just um, to just do what I'm doing and just subtracting. This is taking, what, maybe a minute? 50 minus 45.8. I was even able just to talk and ramble at the same time because... That's what I do. Oh, this one, I didn't need a calculator for that. Uh, just on a row. All right, so now that we have our differences here, um, what we're gonna do is we're going to put them into um, my lab. Sorry, we're in my lab. We're gonna put them into um, our applet so that way we can get our mean and our standard deviation. So I'm gonna uh, push a button so that way I can maybe see our applet in this at the same time. I need to scooch this over to here. Yeah, that works. Now I can see those numbers. All right. So uh, on my applet here, scooch this over. So here we're in our Rasmus Chance applet collection. I'm going to come down and grab our theory-based inference. And then we need to first switch and switch our scenario up. Maybe. Um, it starts at one proportion. You might be tempted to do two means because I kind of have two different samples that, that they've given us, but they actually haven't given us two samples. It's one sample with kind of two variables. So I'm just going to do the one mean situation. I don't know my summary statistics yet. I need to find that. So I'm going to check the box to be able to paste my data in. Now, I don't have the data in a clipboard to be able to paste in. I'm just going to type it. So um, click in it, control A, delete. I'm just going to type in my numbers here. So negative 1.8, sorry, negative 4.8. Press return because I need one per line. Negative 2.4, 2 2.8, 3.1, 0 0.1, 8.1, negative 1.8, negative 4, 4.2, and 7. All right. Uh, now that I have that typed in, I did not put in a header. I did not name this variable. So it's just going to say the word variable over here. Um, I'm not going to include a header. I'm just going to say use data. Um, it's always a quick count. I knew that I had 10 data values and my sample size is 10. So that's nice that I typed that in correctly. Uh, and let's go back and let's double check our um, where we are on our applet. I mean, where we are in our work. It says calculate D bar. Well, here it is. 1.23, two decimal places. Uh, type an integer or a de oh decimal uh, so it's yeah 1.230 it probably it terminates uh, so that 1.23 because it doesn't tell us how far to round our sample standard deviation is this s sub d so this is uh, 4.505 and there it is right there so notice the use of d bar and, and s sub d don't freak out about it d bar is just x bar it's just your sample mean but we're just giving it a special name because it's the mean of the differences, D for differences. And then same thing for S sub D, standard, this, the standard deviation of our differences. All right, so now I wanna do our test. So we saw a second ago that our claim is that, it, the, uh, that it's not equal to, um, and the null is that it is equal to. So I'm gonna make this be a little bit bigger. I'm gonna check our test of significance, toggle this to be not equal to, because um, I would be just as interested if it's higher or lower. We're going to stick with the zero because we want to see if it's just changed. If it hasn't changed, then it would be zero. And so I can see a T of 0.86, which is what we have over here. Our T is 0.86. Um, might be a little bit hard to see on screen. I can maybe make that bigger. Uh, there's our 0.86. Our degrees of freedom is nine. It's not that fancy, weird, crazy formula uh, because it's not a two sample um, process. It's just a one sample process. So it's just n minus 1, 10 minus 1. And then uh, what's our p-value? To three decimal places, 0. 0.410. So notice to three decimal places here, this is 0. 0.410 right here. Just FYI, if you if I wanted to get a confidence interval from this, it's pretty easy to do. You just check the box. Um, and our alpha level was, they said do an alpha of 10%. There we go. I can show you there. That 10% at 0. 0.1. So because of that, I can make this be a 90% two-tail test. 
90% confidence interval. So the equivalent confidence interval for this would be um, as the estimate, estimated difference at 90% confidence for this uh, actual percent difference of home versus away play passing percentages would be negative 1.4 to 3.8. Um, switching back to just this process, so our, our conclusion here, that p-value, that's pretty big. That's about a 40% p-value. Uh, either way you shake it, any plausible kind of alpha, that's way too big. But since our, um, since our, um, since this is kind of smaller than our alpha, we would reject the null. Um, this question does mention some rejection region things, and I've tried to avoid that. Um, but you, we're not needing to answer any questions about this. So they're just kind of giving this to us here about the rejection region. Um, I've been trying to avoid any questions that deal with that. Uh, but basically, because this is bigger than our alpha, bigger than the alpha of 10%, we are going to fail to reject the null. Um, and then, oh God, I just realized that they have this critical value approach. Well, look at the answers here. <laughs> um, this could, if, 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 if the p-value is small here, then you would say, then um, if you reject reject the normal hypothesis, I think those would then just flip. But regardless, uh, imagine if we had our a small we have a if we, since we have a big p value here, then we say that we would fail to reject the null, and that there is not enough evidence to support the claim. The claim being the alternative, so we don't have enough uh, evidence to support that those percentages have changed. All right, I know the conclusions are a little bit awkward. Uh, within our book but i think by this point you should be probably pretty good with that um, so that's that let's do one more question real fast and i'll show you how to do this on excel um, so what is just what i want to highlight about this one is that the question wants us to somewhere right here it says it says let one be before and let two be after this is going to hurt my brain um, if it's a before and after situation, we should do after minus before. Benefit of the doubt, I think the book is trying to be have it be consistent. So whatever they show you the first row, they'll you you do the first row minus the second row, but it then causes things to feel a bit backwards. Let's go ahead and read this question. A food manufacturer claims that eating its new cereal as part of a daily diet lowers total blood cholesterol levels. The table shows the total blood cholesterol levels in milligrams per deciliter of blood of seven patients before eating the cereal and after one year of eating the cereal as part of their diets. Use technology to test the mean difference. Assume the samples are random and dependent if the population is normally distributed at if, if the population is normally distributed, period. At alpha equals 0.05, can we conclude that the new cereal lowers total blood cholesterol levels? All right, so um, the question is at Alpha is 0.05. Can we conclude that the new cereal lowers total blood cholesterol levels? Let's process our our D list here. Um, and they're wanting it before minus after. And it's going to hurt our brains a bit for the logic. But let's see what we need to say about this. So these numbers are a little bit easier to subtract. I don't need a calculator for this. So if it's before minus after, this is going to be 200, um, 200 minus uh, 190 is 10. 230 minus 235 is 5. So just to be clear, I did 230 minus 225. I think I just misspoke. 225 is positive 5. 240 minus 242 is a negative number. So we're doing small minus big. So that produces a negative number. Um, 235 minus 229 is a positive 6. 250 minus 249 is a positive 1. 260 minus 255 is a positive 5, and 225 minus 220 is also a positive 5. Um, and so what's also nice about just the cholesterol change here is someone going down 5, uh, five um, cholesterol points starting at 225 is more impressive than someone going down 5 cholesterol points starting at 226. So this, so this is why it's nice because it helps it be relative to each other because you're pairing them together. All right, so... We want to know if the new cereal lowers total blood cholesterol level. Look at these examples when it lowered. So if you look at 1, 3, oops, sorry, misspoke, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, and 7. All of those we saw are a result of the after being smaller than the before. So that's going to be lowering it. Look at what all those results have in common. They are bigger. Here's that weird problem. Um, 
So this is fine, we're doing the math right, but in results of our D, the D, uh, if the D is bigger than zero, that means that the cholesterol went down. That's a bit weird. Personally, if, we, if I would have done it the other way, after minus before, we would have had a negative result for all those numbers, and then a negative number would make sense because cholesterol would go down. So just I'm just saying that just to know that it will feel backwards based on the directions often that is given to you by the by my lab. Just get mad at it and move on. Uh, but so we're saying that if this is um, if we conclude that it has uh, decreased that the, the, the total blood cholesterol level has gone down, that's actually the D going up backwards. Yes, but that's the way that that goes. So if our D is going up or actually really on average, rather the mu sub D is going up. That's our claim right here um, at uh, for our alternatives that mu sub D is bigger than zero. And the complement, and the complement is that uh, mu sub d is less than or equal to zero. All right. Um, so what I'm going to show you now. So I wanted to, I'm not going to go through the whole thing again because um, it's just the same same stuff. I would just type it in and be able to get our test. I, I'm going to show you how to do this in Excel, and then or how to do the subtraction in Excel, and then also show you how to do this in your 84 if you have that. All right. So let's. Oops, wrong button. Let's pop up Excel for the data that we were just looking at. I know you can't see it. Give me just a second. Boom. Okay. So here's this data. So on my lab, um, in this problem um, right here, in our problem way over here in the corner, I would be able to click this button. And you can say, open it in Excel. Um, it'll download and it'll open and you have access to this during the test. Um, and then um, it, it opens up and this is what we have. You'll have to probably click enable editing and then we'll do, we'll do the edit. So what I like to do is I like to label this next column, column C. Um, it might be, um, it may be not be C, but whatever the next one over. So this, I'll say this is D um, and then specifically before minus after. Oh my god, I can't spell. Um, so when I do that, um, if you want to adjust the column, you can move your mouse, you get the double headed arrow and drag it or just double click it and it makes it nice and big. All right. Um, now we can say equal to if you just type the equal to button by the backspace, click in this cell a two minus this cell b two, it's going to do the subtraction for us. And so that's uh, it's doing a, a2 minus b2, which is that 10. Um, you can, uh, if you have access to, you should be able to, hopefully this little square should pop up. You can click and drag on that little square and drag down. That fills down, or you can highlight it, leaving with this one first. Um, and then up at the top, you should see somewhere, uh, you probably actually can't see it. Um, you should be able to see an option to fill down. I don't use it, so I never actually find it. Where is fill down? I'm just going to do this. I think it's actually command D. Command D will do it. Command and control D will fill down. Um, all right. So now that we have that, there's our differences. So now I can come over to our list. Um, and I'm just going to highlight control C for copy. Come over into my list. Control A, delete, control V. So it notice it pastes in the values instead of the formulas. So that's nice. Uh, and then I can just press use data. Notice I did not highlight the, the before minus after thing. I just highlighted the numbers. If I did just select all of C and say copy and move this over, notice it's going to move over that heading. That's fine. You could just check includes header. Um, oops, we would need that first. Uh, we could just check includes header. And then what's it going to do is it's going to ignore that top row and so it's see I have labeled it variable D over here. Always do a double check to make sure what your that your sample size is right. We should have seven values and it says our sample size is seven, which is correct. Um, if you have includes header checked and you don't have a header in the top row, then you just deleted out your top uh, your top variable, your top outcome, your top sample. Um, 
your top data value. That's what the word I'm looking for, um, which we don't want to do. So always be careful about that or just be careful and just not to have it checked. All right, so there's our mean, our sample standard deviation. Uh, I said that it would be greater than, yes. And so here we get a pretty small p-value. Um, and again, our degrees of freedom is six. Um, so there's that. Now let me show you how you can go. Now, obviously for, actually for this one, um, for that particular data set, that it was pretty easy to pretty easy to subtract. You saw me laboring away with a calculator to subtract these. Again, uh, this would be something that you would want to be able to do, um, even with maybe with these decimals. So again, let me just repeat that process. So I'm going to say D, and this is home minus away. We can I can double click there so that way that gets centered. I'm going to press the equal to button, which opens up my function possibilities. Click in 51. Click in B2. Notice they, they have the college listed 1 through 10. That's a use, those are useless values. I'm just ignoring those. Minus C2. That's doing my subtraction, and that's in the correct direction. That should be negative. Fill down. There's my numbers. So now I can highlight them again. Control C to copy. You get the running ants around it. I'm going to get rid of the header thing and paste and to use data. And there's my 10 values, and I can go about my business that way. Um, all right, so now let me show you how we could do this. I'm going to go back to our other, the other one, our um, the before minus after of cholesterol. And let me pop open um, my uh, my 84 here. So real fast how to do this on my 84, and then I'll be done. Um, from my main menu, or from just our home screen, I'm going to press, uh, I need to type in this data. This list needs to be accessible to me. So I'm going to press stat, and then edit, and then I have, I have access to a list here that I can type in. Let me make this, uh, let me find my screen. It's over here. Oops. Um, all right. So the problem is these, these numbers are not these numbers. So uh, I need to clear out this list. So mouse your arrow your cursor up so that way L1 selected and press clear. Do not press delete. Press clear. That'll clear it out. You might have to, you can either press, after you press clear, you'll need to press the down arrow or enter. All right, and then now I can type in my numbers. So 10, 5, negative 2, 6. Ah, ah, oops, sorry. I press the dash button, which actually was a on my keyboard, which is actually the subtraction, and it yelled at me. So negative 2, there we go, 6, 1, 5, 5. All right, so now that I have my values stored in L1, I'm going to press second quit. Now I'm going to go back to stat, error over twice to tests, and I can pick either t test or if I wanted to do a t interval, I could pick t interval. It's the same process. So here's my t test. So if like there's a later question on this homework assignment that you're just giving the data instead of the stats. So here, here's the data you would put in the, sorry, you'd be given the stats instead of the data. You cursor over to stats and you just drop in your, uh, your, mean standard deviation and in. I know it says X bar instead of D bar. That's fine. Just like what we were doing over here on the uh, Raspin Chance applet, which again, on the Raspin Chance applet, if you were given the stats, not the data, you just get rid of the paste data and you just type in your stuff. All right, um, pop this back up. But we have our data. So we're going to go back to data. And we need to um, tell the uh, calculator what is our mu null, what's our mu What's our hypothesized mu equaling to? It's equaling to just zero. Our data is living in L1. If for some reason, I you saw how I had something in L1, maybe I typed it into L2, then I would press second two, and that would be our L2 option, but I'm gonna put it back to L1 by default. We didn't do, do a frequency list. Our alternative here was, I think, a greater than situation. And I'm gonna go down and say calculate. And so here, this is our uh, our t, this p is not the population proportion. This is our, this is the p value, which is our pretty small p value. This x bar is actually d bar. This s of x is actually s sub d because that list is actually d. All right, so that's how you can use the uh, one of our free applets. So you can use the 84 for that. Um, again, make sure, especially on the online uh, online platform. Make sure that you are doing the subtraction in the order in which the question states. Otherwise, you're going to get it wrong because your computer is going to grade it backwards. Um, so make sure that you're looking for what that is. Um, other than that, I think you should be pretty good to go. I hope this helped. I'll see you in the next one.
Bye.